Hello, this is Victor. I'm here uh, in a new part uh, uh, on the painting work on this uh, sky weaver. I know that I'm doing several parts, but I try to cover a different uh, aspect of the painting job in each part. Now we are going to do uh, what I expect to be the last part on the painting of the bike. That is going to be the mask that we have here. And yeah, and some other details like the highlight here and how to do the the highway weapon. And here on the highway weapon I just focus on this part because this will follow exactly the same process that I follow for the rest of the bike and it's not of the interest to repeat again the same the same work. So if you want to know how I do all the purple highlight and the gems, go to previous parts where this is explained. So now we will start um, with the mask and uh, this detail here. So to do the mask, I will try to put this on a support to make my life easier. So the first we are going to do is we are going to apply a base of the color lilac. We are going to start with a very soft purple and I will try not to apply on inside of the mouth so I will apply this everywhere except in the mouth and except the eyes. So uh, just apply a base and this is quite a straightforward process. I, I will put now the hammer the camera at higher speed because it's not really rocket science what I'm doing here. I'm just applying some layers of paint on this um, piece. So I will put no, the fast camera. So the base color now is applied. As you can see, I, I try to thin quite a lot the paint to avoid that the, um, I have any texture, uh, additional texture I want to make the paint job as thin as possible. And I don't know if you have seen that, but I did about three layers, for example, on the top of the head. So while this is drying, I will take advantage to do the to do the final detail on the back flaps. Uh, of the bike here, of this blue, and here is going to be quite a straightforward work. What I will do is I will use Bahar blue and I will do edge highlight. So, again, no, it's not a difficult step. This one is just carefully we go to the edge and we follow the edge of these plates. Okay, so we do like that and we do the same for all the other plates so I think I will do one in camera this side in camera and you can imagine that it repeats the same on the other side and on the other wing so once you have this like that the only thing that you can do to enhance a little bit more the highlights is I take a little bit of white, thin it a lot, no, uh, with with water, with thinner, and yeah, very little, take very little, very little on the tip, and from the corner you do something like that. And you do the same on the other corner. If it's too much, or you deviate that happened to me here. You can go with Baharo blue again and make it and take off a little bit like that. Uh, 
Okay, so I repeat again on the other one. This is a small one. We take a very little. We start from the corner and we do something like that. This is enough. We go to the other corner and just on the corners that are at the edge of the wing. I will not do on the inside corners here. So this is what I will do on the other ones and I will do this the next off camera. Now, yeah, the, the highlights on the flaps are done, as I explained, and I will now focus on the mask and I will do, uh, I will apply a layer of white. So what we try to do is to apply white leaving some of the purple on the recesses. So just layering up and try to use the white quite um, thin to avoid that this is Mm -hmm. accumulating in any part so yeah mm -hmm. we'll start for example here I will do this we'll change to the other brush From time to time you will see that I, I just pick water to thin the paint that I applied on, on the on the mask. Here I want to do first this and this and then go with is too this white is becoming too thick. Thin it down. Problem of white is this white is so matte that you can see very easily the, the bright strokes. As you can see, I try to take a lot of water to make the finishing as smooth as possible. The problem with making the paint too much thin with water is that you can lose a little bit the control where the paint is going. So you have to be careful in that area. You cannot. I don't want to make it that. Thin. I don't. I don't want to make it light, light watery. So I apply here on the side. So just. And it's good that it's transparent in the paint, and it's better to do two layers and play with the layers, and, and that the paint is a little bit transparent will help as in making it um, in making the transition softer. So a little bit more here. Then we do it. It's more or less the same if you have watched the, the video on how I do the, the Harlequin players or any other, is how I do the, the is similar to the process that I follow for the mask of all my Harlequins. But as the surface is bigger and the mask is bigger, you have to be extra careful when doing that. Here, we need more thick to avoid that it's going into the black area. So 
I prefer to do this completely on camera because then you can see how I apply and how I play with with the thin so with how thin is the pain to make in some areas in some parts thinner and other parts I, I'll apply it thicker. When you have flat areas, light, light of light parts like the top, the, the forehead, here in the cheeks, it's better that you apply this a little bit thinner. When you have a small area and parts like the lips or these parts here, for example, this, you can apply it thicker because then you have better control. There, okay. But if you apply too thick the paint on the forehead, you will leave uh, the strokes marks and will not look look good. Like here, I apply too much paint. Now I use water, try to remove it a little bit. And the same a little bit here. White can be quite tricky to have smooth surfaces. Here on the side, and then I do the cheek, the chin, sorry. the top lip then to do the inside of the of the mouth I will take will use the, the previous brush I will apply it take very little paint it's not a dry brush but I take I remove some paint from the brush first on the paper and I apply him this horizontal doing very little pressure. You apply very little pressure, just very horizontal and very little pressure. It's important not to use in that case you want the paint to be a little bit thick to avoid the can go into the recesses and it's better that you apply very little paint it's like a dry brush but very soft one so as you can see I go And always apply it in the opposite direction or perpendicular direction to the slots.
Okay. We work a little bit more on the white. Oh, that here is the I will apply a second layer. So this is how it's looking like right now. So now we are going to apply some washes. The first wash that I will apply is on the on the mouth to make this slot the slots or, or these things more sharp sharper. Say we take some noon oil. Shake it well. We use some noodle oil. We'll apply this on the mouth. Okay, this will make the slot sharper and it's good that it's looking a little bit greyish the white. It's I think it looks well uh, with contrasting with the pure white of the mask. And now we are going to take um Drachi Violet. This one you have to be careful because it's very dark. We don't want to be too violet and then I will apply a little bit here. You can see I apply very little and on the other side. Okay. I'll apply a little bit here on the nose. Take very little wash. You don't want to do a wash all over the mask. You just want to apply this where you think you can enhance the the sculpt. So here we follow a little bit here the border. Then for here you can make it stronger. I will do the same here. And of course, this part here below, you wanted to make the mark, and below the nose. And I think this, you can make a very thin one. Here you have to be very careful, take a lot, put very little paint. You can put a little bit.
this is very little to make this type of small shading this should be more than enough we wait until this is completely dry and we are going to do the final touch applying gloss varnish so this is how the mask is looking like right now and now we are going to apply gloss varnish to make this look like um, like a little bit porcelain so what I will do is I, I will do this small touch just with white this in that part I want to make the black a little bit smaller so I go here on the edge this is better so now it's looking more more evilish. We'll do the same here. And I will apply a little again white here. And here. Yeah, this is better. I will correct this too much here. Okay, I like a lot how it's looking like. And this white is very matte. And I think this mask is looking more for a satin or a gloss finishing. Satin is also very good. And then you will uh, make the white less matte. Uh, as you can see here, the white is not completely white. It's a little bit more darker. So we can do, we can benefit from that and apply another layer of white just here on the top. As I'm doing down. This is why it's good sometimes to play with the transparency of the colors and use it in your benefit. Because you can use the, that to enhance the highlights on the miniature. Okay. So this is how the mask is looking like right now. I think it's looking quite good. And I will wait until this is completely dry before doing the varnish because I don't want to mess up. So I will be back in a minute once this is completely dry. So now that the paintwork is completely dry, we are going to apply hard coat to make it glossy. And I will do the same on the gems. So to apply the varnish we are going to apply the varnish on the mask if you see a little bit of whitening it's not a problem the, this, the, this will disappear once the, the varnish is completely dry so I apply this Sure that you apply a smooth layer all over the mask, let it dry, and we are going to do the same here on the gems. So we are going to apply on each gem a little bit of the gloss varnish to add some extra varnish. We are going to do the same on the screen. Small ones here, this one here, don't forget this, this is small, we have to be careful we don't put the finger on the top of a gem. I will not do these things on the on the reactors. I don't think it's worth it and I don't think it's needed. But I will do on these ones. I'm doing this right now because I will do long no a long stop. So I let uh, I'll give time to the varnish to dry up and be sure that for tomorrow when I go back to the paint this is completely dry. So you check that 
everything it's okay and carefully I put this back to the base you can see this this new base types are holding the bike very well in position so yeah this finalizing this part and now yeah to just uh, I will do next this part of the of the weapon so now that the varnish is completely divided you see how it's looking like and it's shiny and it's smooth also on the mask we are going to cut this part here we can use the clippers to do that Okay, and we are going to glue the mask on this part of the bike if you don't cut this it's going to look um, like elevated and I don't want that so I want the mask to be down and integrated uh, with the uh, yeah, I want it down integrated with the design of the bike so we put some glue here okay. if it's happening what's happening to me that was a little bit stuck the glue uh, when you apply press you don't do it on top of the miniature do it on top of a paper because in case it's blocked and the block and the thing the blocking is just getting out suddenly you will have a big drop of glue on, on the miniature so we put this on the bike yeah, and we know we wait until this dry this goes looks like right now the bike and the next step will be to do the weapons I will do the, the black parts of the weapons and once I'm going to do the, the I will do first the black parts and when I'm going to do something that is different that I have not explained before I will I, I will explain this on camera. So the the purple highlights are done on the weapons. Here one, here the other. Okay. And now I will put some metallic. I will use from a scale 75 a speed metal. You can use um, uh, any light silver to do the same. I like to use this metal because it's the 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 metallic grain is very small. In if you're using citadel, you can use room fine and uh, room fine and steel in place. So um, with this metal metallic color, I will paint two parts of the weapons. So I will paint here this part. Okay, and you can you will see that I will need two layers. And to do this part, the best is I put my brush horizontal and I apply this metallic. Okay, and you will see that I will need more likely two layers to make a solid cover. On on this part, we'll also paint this part. And, and okay, up to here. So we'll do this, then we have to the sides. As you can see, yeah, I will let it dry first. A little bit more into the detail, into the detail here. Okay, let it dry a little bit and then I will do a second layer. And then in that weapon we are going to do just this middle part. I will not do the things around, only this part.
Okay. Where are these? And most likely we'll need to do also two layers to have a nice coverage. This paint it comes very thin from so you don't need to thin it more. And you can apply it directly as it comes. You don't need to up, to add any type of thinner. This is why you do the, the inside first because you it's very easy to to there the arounds the surrounding areas so and remember that I have this part of the sprue to help me, me in handling this weapon so let it dry and now I check if this one has dried See, and then we do the second layer. You can see that now it's much visible. Sorry, I'm off, off the camera. I will move this down. We're going to do the sides. The side we have to be very careful not to go into the black. We will do the other side. So I will keep applying this color and I will be back once it's applied. So once the metallic is completely divided, here and where I have the and here. Okay. We are going to do a wash with um Dvachi Violet. So you will apply this something like that. Try to avoid that is too much. So if you apply too much and remove it with the same with the brush, we want to give a, like a glaze more than a wash. So we try to be soft with with the application of this. Important to to do it here. Here you can be a little bit more heavier because we go to the slot between the black and the silver. And on the top, I try to avoid to play too much. Here and we go on the bottom. Then we apply here. Okay, this is what we do on the shuriken cannon. Then on the hardware cannon, we will do a wash all over the the metallic. To give this for please tonality, and now we wait until the wash is completely dry. As you can see, I start doing the gems. I will, uh, if you want to know how the gems are done, uh, look in in previous parts of the painting tutorial of the bike, where I explain how I do the gems for the bike, and I will follow the same process that I follow for this gem here. So yeah, I wait until this is dry, and I will be back. So now the wash is dry and what we are going to do is we are going to use the same metallic that we used before 
to highlight the metallic leaving the purplish and the purple um, tonality on the recesses and, and yeah and so as you can see I just highlight and I will leave the purple here on, on these areas okay and then this part I will just leaving some purple then on the high wear cannon we are going to start from here and we are going to apply on the on the extreme and Okay, and we are going to apply. We are going to follow this shape here. But here we have a gem. And we can do just here a little bit like that. And now we can paint the. We can start painting the this part we'll start applying baharot blue so we are going to apply a layer of baharot wood on all these parts and yeah and just to save time I will put no on fast camera So now the base color is applied. I prepare here white, Baharov uh, blue, Temple Guard blue, and half turquoise to paint the next step. And I will apply. I will start applying white on the extreme of the weapon. So I will apply white here. Try to make it quite thin and we are going to make a transition with the Bajar Blue. have 
always killing water next to me to make the paint thinner and fresher and to help me on making this blending so I take water when I feel that it's too thick then this helps me also in the blending Okay. Take you know, white and I do this pass. And I write there more here. Here, for example, is missing the white. Take water. Be sure that you do all the sides, of course, of the weapon. Now I will go to the opposite side and I will use uh, the how to case to add some here. Water it and then I will use Bahara Blue. If it's too dark. We take more Bahar blue. Keep applying this first all around. Now we are going to use a little bit of Bahar Blue to try to make the transition softer with water. We play a little bit here. And we are going to play a little bit of Temple Guard Blue here on the top of, of this peak. Also, I can use temple or blue to help on the transition, but now I see that it's looking good. Take a little bit of white, a little bit more here. I think the blue was. Okay. 
think this is looking good. Last thing we do, we take Temple Guard Blue, that is a little bit darker than the Bahar Rod. We apply a little bit here on the metal. Following the the high wear thing. So like if it is a reflection of the high wear thing. And you can see I do the same for all the sides. Okay. Next, on these things that look like gems here, I will just apply a dot of white. Okay, and then I will apply some blue just here in this side of the weapon. It's a very little OSL effect here. I don't want to go too crazy because I want this weapon exchangeable, so if you do this layer at a very bright light, you should also do here, no? because this weapon go here, you should do something here. But as I can use this weapon, I can use any of the two weapons, I prefer not to do this on the bike and just work on the weapon. Okay. Now what we can do, we take white and we go just in the middle we do thing like that Here, this should be white. Here, we got, I want to use a little bit of temporal blue to make it soft. So, I think now the weapon is looking okay. Okay, I have a small flash, but we can make it more discreet, applying a little bit of blue. I think now it's looking good, and we have just, we have to paint the gems. So I will paint the gems off camera, and I will be back just to do the final, the final touches, and, well, the final touches, just to cut this, to put varnish, we are going to varnish all this with gloss. And I will show you how it's looking like once it's put in the bike. So once the paint is dry, we are going to apply gloss varnish. We'll use hair coat from Range Workshop. Check it well when it's a varnish. I'm going to put varnish 
at the edge of this at these things on the of the highway. Don't worry if at the end if it's whitening a little bit, this will be transparent when it's dry. Okay, and then we do the gems. And soon this weapon is ready. Okay, and I put it here on a clam. This gem, and we do this gem. And now I will show you, I will use this one because I can handle from here without touching the gems. Take a clipper and we remove the sprue. And close this thing first. And we can test if it's fitting and how it's fitting. So you will see that it's fitting tight and nicely. So you don't need magnets. It's quite tight and it fits very well. And this is, sorry I was too high. So I was showing, this fits very tight here. So you don't need to, to use magnets. And this is how it's looking like. So this is the version with the cannon, with the catapult cannon, sorry, the shuriken cannon. We'll use now a clamp to avoid this touching, the gems are touching something. We can test this one as well, careful, because I put a lot of varnish here, you have to take it like that, I remove the sprue, okay, the weapon from here, we also can check if it's fitting, and we see that it's fitting perfectly too, so yeah, this weapon fits perfectly here, we will leave it Assembled, and I put I will put this bike on the base. So this is how the bike is looking like. I will do a camera. I will show you from other angle. So this is the bike. Sorry. This is how the bike is looking like. And now we have to do the crew, but remember that I will not explain how, to, how I do the crew because it's the same as procedure that I'm using for the for the Harlequin players. So please check, I will put the link below to the Harlequin player uh, tutorial if you are interested where I show how I'm painting the crew. Here you have how the, crew, the progress on the crew. I start doing some work on them. So let me focus you see here. So same scheme, I will follow the same scheme that I follow for the rest of the army. So here you have the bike is finished. And yeah, and maybe I will do just a video in some in, in some days explaining how I do the final assembly on the crew and how they they look like once everything is assembled. So thanks a lot for watching this video and see you again later. Bye!